welcome back. Stacks and setbacks. So I'm back on the uh, the Ferguson T20. I've been uh, enlightened that it's actually not a Massey Ferguson. It's actually a Ferguson. Ferguson T20. I believe an old an old crony told me that a Fer Massey Ferguson is post 1958 or something like that, and this is a 1954 model. So it's a Ferguson T20. So. Uh, what have I done to this since that last video? So this is obviously going to be a working slasher. Um, so I'm just going through, you know, the whole jigger just to make sure it's good, ready to go, maintained. I mean, the thing has, I mean, I don't know what sort of, it's like, you know, one of those situations where who knows what, uh, how it's been treated in the past, but uh, I thought, you know, it deserves a, a going over. So I've given it a good, uh, good clean, good, good pressure wash. Got a lot of the gunk off. I, uh, at the moment, I'm doing a. Um, so you can actually, I think I showed this in the last video, but yeah, the oil looks like it's got water in it. So I'm hoping it's not a head gasket. You can see there. A little bit of a, a little bit of a drip there, like a, quite a thin viscosity drip. But prior to that, uh, it was actually, you know, relatively thick. So I'm hoping it's condensation or a bit of water's got into the engine uh, for some reason. I did a compression test. We've got 100, 100, 100, and then 90. So not bad. Um, I mean, I think, you know, consistency of 100 is good. You know, it's not going to be a high compression engine, so, uh, you know, I'm calling 100 relatively good for a 70-odd-year-old donk. 90, obviously, uh, you know, that is a little bit low, a little bit inconsistent, but at the same time, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm quietly confident it's actually just, it's just, um, yeah, water in the oil. I'm not sure if I can actually get a shot here, but it's actually pretty good in the uh, bottom end as well. Uh, no sludge, which is good. Um, it's actually, yeah, really clean in here. You know, I was expecting to see a heap of sludge just sort of sitting in the bottom because when I took the rocker cover off yesterday, um, there was a lot of carbon build up looked pretty messy up there, so I was thinking, oh man, this sump's gonna be a complete sludge fest. Um, the, sorry about that. The screen uh, that fits on the side there is actually really good as well. I mean, I haven't touched that. That's just, I've just pulled that straight out. So yeah, it's not even sludged up. I'm pretty happy about that. So what I'm gonna do is take the sump, uh, sump plug off. This little thing here, this big bolt there. Um, clean the rest of that um, uh, sump out. I'll, I'll do a diesel flush. I'll take this rocker cover off and I might actually uh, bring you back to uh, that rocker cover uh, once that's off and show you what the, uh, the top end's like. I've also got a bore scope that I'll throw in the um, in each cylinder and I'll just check out what the, what the, uh, the bore's like and, and pistons. All right, I'll, uh, I'll bring you back when uh, when that's done. Alrighty, rocker covers off, and you can sort of see here some surface rust, which is why I'm thinking it's just had a lot of condensation and it's been sitting around in weather. Um, super scaly, big carbon build up. Um, but the bottom end looks actually pretty good. So I'm going to do a bit of a diesel flush. I've just got um, some diesel in here. I'll put some into a tin. So hopefully I can do this one-handed without it going everywhere.
can see some, you can actually see water sitting on top there. See all those little, those little bubbles of water. Interesting. All right, well, um, I'll do some more of a diesel flush and I'll check you back in soon. All right, let's see if I can do this one handed. So, it doesn't look too bad in there. Obviously there's some carbon build up on top of the piston. Not surprised. But, yeah. I've looked at all four and look they all they all look pretty good. Doesn't just seem to be any sort of anything that stands out that is of concern. Um, I've done a diesel flush. So where I'm at at the moment, uh, done a diesel flush. Um, obviously, I've checked all of the done a compression check. Checked all of the uh, the pistons. Done a ball scope, I guess test. Looks good to me. Uh, I've got a a mate of mine that's bringing around a pressure tester for the radiator tomorrow. So I've actually cleaned out. the engine, if I can get this light working and positioned in the right way, um, here we go, yeah so there's a little bit of sludge at the bottom there I've got to get out but the rest of it is actually pretty good, I'll let that sit overnight and clean, I can actually get my hand in there and clean that out so I'll get a, a rag once that stops dripping and, um, and sort of clean what's left up. So yeah, um, I've got a new, so it's got a, a new radiator on it actually, which, bonus, it's got coolant in it, which is a bit of a, another bonus for a tractor, but yeah, look, I'm going to pressure test the, um, the system, so obviously if, uh, if there's any leaks, it'll be detected in that, in that test. When I say leaks, um, if that pressure drops, that means that there is potentially a blown gasket. Um, so I'm not going to actually put any oil in. I've actually just, I bought some cheap oil to throw in it and I was going to run it for a little bit after I do the diesel flush and just see if that water turns, sorry, see if that oil turns sort of milky. But I don't think I'm going to do that today. I think I'll wait until I pressure test the water system then uh, I'll determine what that, pending that, I'll, I'll determine what I do next. Saves me, I guess, wasting that oil. I can always, uh, I'll, I'll still put that in, of course, but um, I might, it, it, look, if basically there is a, a, a drop in pressure in that pressure test, well then I'm going to um, have to go to plan B. But uh, yeah, look, that's, that's pretty much it. That's had a bit of a standstill until tomorrow. Um, Apart from that, apart from you know me doing that, I have actually got a a wiring loom that I bought and a voltage regulator. I do have that. I'm not sure where that is, but uh, I will probably do another video when I do that on um, on me just converting that over. Oops. The slasher that I got with the tractor was well, I thought it was a bit of a write-off. I mean, it's not actually in the best condition. The the deck's pretty rusty, but it's still, there's no holes in it. Um, I made up this A-frame with a turnbuckle, 
to adjust uh, the deck um, and also made these change just to sort of and basically it, it just came with the deck and the um, uh, clutch and I had to make up this this frame here I also put in some limiting straps or limiting chains which are these here um, because with the Massey Ferguson it doesn't have a position control so essentially when you uh, when you it's in the stationary position the hydraulics will allow the any implement on the back just to just to drop essentially so it's a bit of a pain this is actually off the ground believe it or not just a little bit um, just through those limiting straps there um, but I can actually adjust those depending on what link I put that uh, the uh, u-bolt on um, but I will put a jockey wheel at the back sort of hanging off the back here uh, that way it'll actually support um, you know support the back when I'm, uh, when I'm slashing I've actually had a crack at slashing and it, it slashes like really really well so pretty stoked on that so that's a bonus um, I was actually thinking I'd have to buy another slasher so uh, that saved us a uh, you know three to eight hundred dollars you know thereabouts look I, I think that's it for this session I will keep you up to speed with some more progress on the old Fergie and uh, we'll catch you guys soon